<laughs> well, I didn't expect that. <laughs> Nice little smallmouth bass. All right. Fun catch. Not what we're here for, though. Hey, everyone. Cody here. Welcome, and thank you for joining me for today's video. Today, we are going to go solve my bait problem. We're going to go up to Barkley Dam on the Cumberland River in Lake Barkley and try to catch a few skipjack. Let's get out there and go catch some fish. Welcome back. I hope you're enjoying today's video and if you are, please go down below, click the like button, click subscribe if you're not already a subscriber, and turn on your notifications so you get notified whenever we drop new content. So, as far as how today went, we got some skipjack. Uh, it didn't go as great as I would planned, uh, or would have hoped anyway. I got 28 fish uh, for quite a long period of time fishing. Once I got them figured out, I caught most of the fish pretty quickly but the daylight started fading and once the sun goes down skipjack don't really bite anymore so i'm going to show you guys the winning combination that i use today and explain to you guys everything that i know about skipjack and some of the scientific things that i have developed myself uh, since if you google skipjack there's not a whole lot out there so first things first this was the winning combination for the day uh, it is a little uh, 1 8 ounce jig head with a pink head and a little spinner on it and that was on the end and up about 20 inches or so I got a figure eight knot here and I have a 1 8 ounce uh, used to be white and red jig head with a curly tail grub on the end this was a white curly tail grub it's got some black crap on it from riding in the bed of my truck on my rod and then just up to a um, number one barrel swivel that I had everything tied on because skipjack roll and spin in the current they're notorious for being jumpers it's why they're called Tennessee tarpon and they can cause your line to twist up and just make a mess of things so I always put a swivel on whenever I'm fishing for them alright so now that I've shown you all the lure setup that I use today for success uh, I want to talk to you guys a bit more about what I have available to fish for skipjack and this right here is my primary skipjack box as you can see Right there, it even says skipjack and panfish. If you saw this on anyone else's boat, you would think they were a crappie fisherman. I use it for that as well, but this is definitely my skipjack go-to box. I'll go ahead and show you guys what's in it. So, if you look inside, you'll see an assortment of 
just little crappie jigs, uh, little grub worms, things like that, uh, tube baits. Uh, most of it is red or white or blue. Why? Because America. Uh, no, uh, reality is red, white, and blue seems to do really, really well for skipjack. I have some black and some pink and stuff in here. Uh, I even have some odd colors and stuff that I don't use very often, some oranges. But a lot of these lures are minnow-shaped or grub-shaped, curly-tailed things seem to work really well. Uh, I do have some pink in here. And then I have a variety of jig heads, just various different sizes and colors. Uh, I really like the sickle hook design by Arky. Uh, I seem to get a really good hookup ratio with these, and they're also really easy to remove. Uh, and if a skipjack really chokes one down, you want your hook back, and you don't want to have to break things off, and sometimes they will. They'll just swallow that thing all the way down. And those sickle hooks are really easy to remove. And I also have a few of this type of hook, which is one of what I use today for success. I used it in pink today with a silver spinner. Uh, these are chartreuse or yellow with a uh, gold spinner. And it depends on the day as to what color I'll try. And I'll throw a variety of things in order to see what entices a bite. But once I find a color that the skipjack are really hitting, I stick with it. I might even change over and use strictly that. But for today, it was these B&M curly tail grubs. These are two inch, yeah, two inch curly tail grub. Simple thing. Uh, they worked great today. I caught more fish than anybody else who was fishing today, at least for the period of time that I was there. And, I mean, everybody was throwing a variety of different things. Not everyone was fishing for skipjack, but most people were. Uh, a lot of people were throwing sabiki rigs. I th tried throwing sabiki rigs as well, but had no success whatsoever for almost 45 minutes. As soon as I switched to the curly tail grub, I got a first fish. Everything got started and going smooth. All right, so I got a question not long ago that asked... What is the best time of year to fish for skipjack? Well, to answer that question in its entirety, I'm gonna share with you all all the information that I have formulated for skipjack, my entire theory on them and their movement. So if you look at other species of forage fish, other species of bait fish like shads, uh, shiners, even things like bluegill and stuff like that, uh, all those fish survive because they are prolific reproducing fish, which means they breed, spawn, whatever you want to call it, multiple times throughout the year, and they have a relatively high uh, success rate for their egg hatching and for their young reaching a, or enough young reaching an age of maturity so that they can create the next generation. And they do that by spawning multiple times in a year. Uh, gizzard shad, for instance, will spawn anywhere from one all the way up to 20 times in a year, probably even more in some bodies of water, as long as the water temperature is uh, in the range it needs to be for them to spawn and for their eggs to hatch successfully, they will spawn. Uh, and they'll do that all throughout the year as many times as they possibly can, and the reason for that is they are preyed upon by just about everything that swims. So skipjack, their spawning habits haven't been thoroughly studied, but I've done my own studies over the years of catching them, and I've taken fish from various sections of a river, uh, various times of the year that I've caught, and I've opened them up and tried to look and see, hey, is this fish carrying any eggs? Hey, has this fish uh, fertilized eggs or anything like that? So I've tried to figure out when their spawning periods are, and what I've determined is that skipjack herring have two periods of the year where they spawn, at least in uh, West Tennessee, uh, Southwestern Kentucky, things, and anywhere in that area of the South. Uh, water conditions are almost perfect for them in early spring and then mid to late fall. And I think the reason for that is it coincides with when this region gets more rain than any other time in the year. Uh, this region of Tennessee, this region of western Kentucky, uh, the rivers here, they get the most rain in the spring and then in the fall. The summer's fairly dry, winters are fairly cold and dry. Uh, we might get some snow, might get a little precipitation during the winter, but not nearly as much as we do in the spring and fall. And what this helps to do is to change the water temperature. In the spring it obviously raises the water temperature with warmer water running into the Cooley River from the winter and then in the fall it cools the river down 
where the summer months have warmed it up and now we've got cooler rain running into you know running into the river to drop the temperature uh, this period of time kind of matches up with when we see a large number of skipjack uh, stopped at dams and at locks now skipjack by nature are a migratory fish prior to human habitation prior to humans building dams uh, these fish were found almost the entire length of the Mississippi River. Uh, the northern reaches of the Mississippi, they are now called the ghost fish because you can find one here and there, but they really aren't as prolific as they used to be. And this is because of the creation of dams blocking their spawning runs. Uh, by nature, they're a brackish water fish, which means they live in water that's kind of a mix of fresh and salt water. And they run up fresh water tributaries, particularly the Mississippi River and all of its major rivers, uh, in order to spawn. Now, no, like I said before, nobody's really studied when this is, but I've figured out that from about mid-March until mid-May, there is a period of time when skipjack are found in abundance. Uh, not on every single day, and I'll get into why that is here in a moment, uh, but any time in that time frame, mid-March, mid-May you will find skipjack running up into dams and locks and that's because that's where they get stopped they don't intend to be there they want to run further up the river but those locks and dams stop them so that time of year you can find them there and then again in about mid-September until mid-November and if you look at water temperatures, they're almost the same for these two periods of time in the year. Now, why don't we find skipjack in mass every single day of that time period? Well, if you skipjack fish a lot, what you will notice is that the size of skipjack that you catch on any given day are roughly the same. You might get one or two outliers that are significantly larger or significantly smaller than the rest of the group. But for the most part, if you're catching skipjack really, really well on a given day, they're all roughly the same size. This has to do with skipjack moving in large schools. And they move in these large schools of roughly the same size of fish. This is a common, common habit that you see in the ocean of schooling bait fish, and it's definitely something you see with skipjack if you pay close attention. Why do we see this? Because skipjack are cannibalistic. Uh, they will eat one another. They don't care. Skipjack are top predators. They eat anything smaller than them. And this is why they are so much fun to catch. And it's also why they're so easy to catch on lures that imitate small minnows and other small bait fish because they just they go for them and they consume them. And they need to consume large numbers of them because they're prolific reproducers and it takes a lot of energy to make little fish. Now, what you will notice with these groups of fish all being caught at the same time is you might have one or two days where you go to the river and you'll catch you know a hundred skipjack in an hour uh, that's really not uncommon if you ask people who fish for them quite often and then you might go back a couple days later and think I'm gonna fill up my cooler again and you might only catch 10 fish for six hours worth of fishing and you think oh well they're gone they're done with their spawning run no if you come back at another time, within that time period that I mentioned before, you'll probably catch another big group of skipjack, and you'll be able to fill a cooler on another day. And that's because those spawning groups of varying sizes of fish are moving up into that dam, they're spawning, and then once they do their thing, they disperse back into the main body of water, or they start heading back down toward what for them would be uh, the Mississippi River and back out into the Mississippi uh, basin where it empties out into the Gulf of Mexico uh, but because of locks and dams they get stopped on either end now so they can only run up so far spawn and then they can only run down so far now I've kind of proven this for myself anyway by uh, opening up several fish like I said and if I catch fish in the main river and the middle middle of the river what have you I've noticed that the females still have eggs uh, when I catch them up at dams, especially if I have a really good day of fishing, all the female fish that I open up, they don't have any eggs left. Uh, they've spawned and they're getting ready to move back down into the main river. Or I might catch a few that still have some eggs, but they don't have nearly as many as a female that was getting ready to spawn. It's, uh, it's obvious that they're, they're, they've done their thing. They're getting ready to leave. 
and then the skipjack will be gone for a couple of days in that area, and then there'll be more move in. I haven't nailed down a definitive timeline for this, but this is why I think skipjack move into these areas and then they seem to disappear. They're not really disappearing. You just had one school that moved up and now it's dispersed. Uh, I think another reason why they do that, not only because they're cannibalistic and they prey on one another, but skipjack need current for their eggs to spawn. They're a lot like striped bass in that way that their eggs have to roll a certain number of times. Their eggs have to have some current, some flow, oxygenation, whatever it is, uh, in order to help them hatch. Maybe it's for proper fertilization. I'm not entirely sure. But I know that their eggs have to have current. They got to move. And maybe they do this because in a manner so as to spread their eggs out over a wider area. And this probably helps keep uh, that proliferation up and keep a large number of them spawning uh, at any given time uh, during that spawning window. So you might be asking yourself, well, we know all these things about how to catch them when they're spawning. We know they're going to be in big numbers at these locks and these dams and warm water discharges and things like that at this time of the year. But what are you going to do about the rest of the year? Well, I have another video out where I show you guys how to pack and store skipjack where they'll keep for a long period of time. So I would highly recommend that during the big run periods for skipjack, you try to catch what you're going to need. Don't catch too many so that you're stuffing a freezer uh, full of a bunch of fish you're not going to use because more often than not, you're just going to end up throwing that away and that's a big waste on our resources and you shouldn't do that if you can avoid it. Uh, but if you can pack away what you need, what you know you're going to use for fishing, uh, that's your best option. But if you can't, you can always find a few skipjack at those locks, at those dams, uh, anywhere where a river runs into another river where the skipjack are you know, native, there will always be some number of them available. Now you're not going to be able to stock your freezer uh, on any given day of the summer or any given day of the winter. You're going to have to target locations that are going to hold those fish. Now in the winter, anywhere that you have a warm water discharge is going to be a magnet for skipjack because it is a magnet for small bait fish. Uh, the small bait fish, they need that stable water temperature, that slightly warmer conditions in order to survive. And because they're in there, the skipjack are going to be feeding on them as heavily as they can because, as I mentioned earlier, they are top predators and they are always feeding. They're always on the hunt. Unfortunately for them, uh, they are also always hunted because they are catfish and striper candy without question. So just a couple of final notes on things that I've learned about skipjack. Uh, if you look at a skipjack and you look at its anatomy, uh, they have really large eyes for the size of fish. And what that tells you immediately is that they are sight predators. So fishing in water that is really, really murky, really stained, anytime after a heavy rain is probably not going to produce the best numbers of skipjack that you could have. You might want to wait until the water calms down just a little bit they love current, so fast moving water is not going to be a problem, but really murky, heavily stained water by abnormal standards. If you already fish in an area where the water is stained, uh, if skipjack are native there, if they're doing their thing, they probably aren't having an issue with that. But if you've had a lot of runoff and the river is, looks like chocolate milk, uh, you're probably not going to do too well in your skipjack fishing. So save it for a day when the weather's kind of clear and your river is at least stable as far as color and clarity. Also, change up what you're using for bait and change up how you're retrieving it if you're going to be lure fishing. You can catch skipjack on minnows. A lot of people do it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Skipjack are a fantastic sport fish on light tackle, especially for kids. If you want to take kids out and have let them have a blast just catching bunches and bunches of fish, uh, it's really hard to beat skipjack, especially if they're on the run. But make sure you're varying your retrieves. Make sure you're changing up your colors. Uh, and Try to find something they, that they like. Tie your own sabikis and throw on two or three different colors and see which one they're hitting because more often than not what you'll see is they will hit a specific one that is a certain color. And once they key in on that, then it's easy for you to just change out the color of your grub or the color of your lure. So before I go, I wanted to debunk one final myth for you all, and that is 
you have to have skipjack to catch big catfish. You have to have skipjack to catch big striper. This is a blatant lie. Uh, I've heard people say, well, if you don't have skipjack, you don't have big catfish. That's bullcrap. Uh, in my hometown, I fish a lake quite frequently, and there are no skipjack in that lake. There are gizzard shad, and there are large striper in that lake, plenty of them over 40 pounds, and there are some massive flathead catfish in that lake. It has some blues, not very many, but it does have some. Uh, my son caught a 77-pound blue out of there, and I caught a 68-pound flathead out of there, and there are no skipjack in that lake. It's strictly gizzard shad and bluegill and things like that. Make sure you're not buying skipjack for the purpose of using for bait in a lake where they don't exist. I'm not saying you won't catch fish with a bait that isn't native to that body of water. I mean, uh, if you're watching this video, you've probably fished with chicken livers before, and I don't really know of any chickens that swim in the water, and catfish and striper and stuff still eat those. Uh, and I've also seen videos of people taking saltwater fish, saltwater bait fish, and fishing for catfish with them, and it leads to success. And that's just because fish are opportunistic feeders. They get a you know a tasty morsel dressed down in front of them, they're going to eat it. But don't think that you need skipjack in order to catch big fish. If you have gizzard shad, alewife, threadfin shad, shiners, things like that, get yourself a cast net, learn to throw it. I'll do a cast net video for you guys here shortly. I actually prefer having gizzard shad because they're a lot easier to keep alive in a standard live well or in a live well that you've at least rounded the edges of. Uh, then skipjack are. Skipjack only live about half a day at the most in a live well, but I can keep gizzard shad alive all day long. And another great catfish bait is just bluegill, sunfish, anything like that. Uh, white bass work great, and even some of your other game fish species, uh, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, crappie, uh, all of those things work great as catfish bait. They work great as striper bait. Uh, trout is actually a very common striper bait. Just make sure that if you're going to use any of these game fish, you're taking legal size game fish and also your legal krill limit. Uh, don't go overboard you know, with using those game fish as your bait. Just make sure you're staying within the law. But don't get hung up on the idea that you need skipjack to catch big fish. It's just what I use here in the Cumberland River, the Tennessee River, places like that that have skipjack native to them. When I go back home, and fish any of my other bodies of water that I really like to frequent, I make sure I take my cast net or some night crawlers with me and I catch bluegill, I catch threadfin shad, I catch gizzard shad. Uh, make sure you're using baits that are native to your bodies of water. Those are the things that are gonna lead to your best success. Mm -hmm.